from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. The search continues for a Henrico woman missing in the James River. The sexual assault trial of a Henrico gym teacher begins. And an update on the lawsuit filed against Henrico by two environmental organizations. That's all coming up in today's Henrico News Minute. It's Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. And it's brought to you today by the law firm of Barnes & Deal. And now for the news. Search crews in Richmond today continue to look for two women who fell out of their flotation devices on the James River near Boshers Dam two days ago. One is 23-year-old Lauren Winstead of Henrico County. She and the other missing woman, 28-year-old Sarah Irway of Chesterfield, apparently were part of a group of 12 people rafting or boating down the river. All fell out when they went over the dam. The other 10 made it safely to land. Anyone with information should call Henrico Police at 501-5000. A former Short Pump Middle School student who has accused gym teacher Dean Lakey of sexual assault took the stand yesterday as his trial opened. The girl was 14 when the alleged assault happened. She's now 18. When she was questioned on the stand yesterday, she was shaking, crying, and could barely talk at times. She described Lakey coming into the bathroom at Short Pump Middle School, pushing her onto the sink and assaulting her from behind. Lakey, however, has denied that he ever touched or had any sexual interaction with the girl. His attorney, Craig Cooley, said that Lakey couldn't really even recall her as one of his students. Lakey originally was indicted last August for six felonies. Last week, the charges were amended to one count of indecent liberties and one count of object sexual battery. The alleged victim said last year that she had been raped by Lakey on several occasions during his gym class when she left to use the restroom. Yesterday, Cooley's line of questioning centered on inconsistencies in the alleged victim's statement and testimony, a common tactic for the defense in cases in which there is a delay in reporting a sexual assault case. When the girl claimed the assault happened at Short Pump Middle School, Cooley said, Lakey was actually coaching basketball at Deep Run High School. Another inconsistency he noted was that the girl said she was locked in the bathroom and assaulted, but there was no working lock on that specific bathroom where the attack allegedly occurred. Now, our Anna Bryson was in the courtroom all day yesterday covering the case. You can read her full report right now at HenricoCitizen.com. She'll be there again today and tomorrow. The case is expected to wrap up tomorrow. The two environmental organizations that filed a citizen lawsuit back in December against Henrico County alleging that the county had repeatedly violated the Clean Water Act during the past three decades now are challenging the decision of a federal judge who ruled in April that their suit could not subject Henrico to civil financial penalties because the county already was facing those penalties from the state. In their suit, the plaintiffs, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the James River Association, alleged that Henrico committed a series of pollution violations over many years by allowing repeated failures of its sewer system and water reclamation facility in Verina, which resulted in tens of millions of gallons of raw sewage escaping into the James River and feeder streams and creeks. The plaintiffs sought the imposition of equitable relief, in essence a court ruling requiring the county to take certain actions to address the pollution, as well as civil penalties which could include plaintiffs' legal fees and the potential implementation of fines against Henrico from the state. A month later, Henrico officials filed a motion requesting dismissal of the entire suit, but in an April 11th memorandum opinion, Judge David Novak of the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia agreed in part with both sides, concluding that the plaintiff's request for equitable actions could proceed, but no civil financial penalties could be levied against the county. He said that was because the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality already had begun its prosecution of Henrico for the failures of its sewer system, and that process involved civil penalties. Now the plaintiffs are challenging that ruling asking Novak to reconsider. It's a story you'll only read on HenricoCitizen.com. I've spent the past week digging into things to update you on where everything stands currently. You can find my article right now on our website. 
Another air traveler has been arrested at Richmond International Airport trying to bring a gun onto a plane. TSA officials stopped the Petersburg woman from carrying her 9mm handgun loaded with eight bullets, including one in the chamber, onto a flight May 29th. Her carry-on bag triggered an alarm in the security checkpoint x-ray unit. It was the sixth time this year that TSA officers have detected a gun at a checkpoint following 20 such occurrences last year. And a traffic alert if you're traveling in eastern Henrico today or tomorrow, Oakley's Lane will be closed at the crossing of the Norfolk Southern Railway from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. both days. There will be a detour in place. Today's Enrico News Minute has been brought to you by Barnes & Deal. Barnes & Deal has emerged as a highly respected family law firm over the past three decades with the resources, skills, and experience necessary to handle high-asset divorces and other complex family law matters across Virginia. To learn more, visit BarnesFamilyLaw.com, that's B-A-R-N-E-S, or call 796-1000.